My name is Ekaterina Golovchenka. I was with TE Subcom for more than 20 years. I was managing director and I was the first woman fellow of TE Connectivity. I'm Massimo Manna. I'm a senior principal engineer at uh, TE Subcom. My name is Mark Enright. I'm vice president of customer solutions and product management. I'm responsible, among other things, for application engineering. Almost 99% of entire global communications are being handled by undersea cables. These cables now can carry up to 160 terabits per single fiber or even more. If you think about, say, Trans-Pacific cable, right? It goes and connects the United States to China or Japan, but it leaves small islands like Samoa Islands and others as they bypass them. The technology that we invented would allow the small island nations to connect to the big pipes and be part of the global internet story. There's basically two classes of undersea systems. There's repeated and non-repeated systems. Any systems greater than 500 kilometers typically have periodic amplification to repeat it, uh, to repeat the signal or boost the signal, and that can go up to 13,000 kilometers. Then there's a shorter class of systems, 500 kilometers or less, where there's no intermediate repeater required. It's just pure fiber optic under the ocean, and all of the specialty uh, equipment and boosting is done on the shore end. We were pursuing a undersea project in the Persian Gulf. There was a network being planned to connect Iraq to the United Arab Emirates and connect uh, countries along the way, uh, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, which the length of those branches was within the repeaterless range. But um, typically, uh, given the constraints of a design, often, even if the leg is shorter, um, we'll add repeaters to make the entire network a repeated network and we were seeing if there was some way that we could try to perhaps meld those two technologies and improve our offering. And at that time, these two technologies that Mark just described, repeaterless and repeated, were completely separate. There was no way by which we would merge them together. So I came to Massimo's office and I said, hey, we're the best in the world. We know what we're doing. Can we invent something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sure, yeah, and thanks for, you know, Katya, uh, leadership actually. The, what happened was that we took uh, a deeper look at the wet system design of these uh, sort of regional systems where we uh, already had uh, what we call branching units, which allowed to uh, divert uh, the cable towards uh, some, you know, branch stations that are uh, along the way. And there was also uh, out there uh, Raman amplification, which was, uh, you know, starting to be available. Uh, that allows to basically uh, provide uh, uh, distributed amplification through the fiber uh, without uh, having to you know, place uh, position you know, repeaters on the branches. Something we pride ourselves on is being innovators in undersea technology and always pushing things forward. We have a consistent track record of that and this is one of many examples. It's a great honor to you know, be uh, connected to Thomas Edison in the sense that uh, he was uh, at, at the forefront of the cutting edge technologies of his times. So um, being associated with uh, Thomas Edison in this respect is uh, really uh, a big honor. For me, I'm very uh, humbled and honored to be included in the many distinguished recipients of this award. So it's sort of something very personally rewarding to me and I'm thankful for it. I was able to accomplish this, to be here in his library and getting an award uh, is extremely important for me and I'm hoping this also will send a message to all the girls in New Jersey, yes we can do it if you try and if you are driven to innovate and find new things.